like the symbol, they can use their arcane magic to heal as well as smite and combine spells in creative ways. Veltelar. The capital of Aglarond, Veltelar was founded by humans from Chacenta in 756 DR as Velprin, and from the outset was a thriving port exporting timber and fish, the main outdoor market for visiting outlanders to trade with local residents, and the largest non-elven settlement in Aglarond. It became Velprintala in 1066 DR, proclaimed as such by King Brindor Olsin, who defeated the human army of Velprin in the Battle of Ingle's Arm in 1065 DR, founding Aglaron and becoming its first king, and was renamed Valtalar in 1442 DR by the Simbark Council to mark its recognition of Altumbel as its own realm, the Yerwood as self-governing, and the Wizard's Reach as independent territory. Never a walled city, Valtalar has expanded almost constantly, doubling in population between 1368 DR and the tax census of 1479 DR, which tallied 72,446 citizens. Throughout its history, there have been elves dwelling in Veltalar, but it has always been predominantly human. In recent years, the half-elven population has grown almost as large as the human count. The palace and the Simbarks. Since King Brindor built the first palace in 1066-1067 DR, the ruler of Aglarond has always reigned from a palace in the city. The current castle-like, it has turreted towers, park-like grass courtyards, and large windowed reception rooms. Stone Mansion began in 1299 DR and rebuilt and expanded many times since is the Palace of the Symbol. She lived there between 1320 DR and 1425 DR, and since then it has been the seat of the ruling Simbark Council, formed entirely of the Symbol's apprentices, and subsequently of them and their apprentices. The current council, as of 1497 DR, is 12 strong, a human male, two human females, three half elven males, and six half-elven females. The most dominant members of council, driving policy and debate, are the forceful, energetic, merry-spirited, and whimsical Shantavra Dunmorn, half-elf female, and the handsome Saturnan Relendoror Horendhelv, half-elf male. Their usual public voice, or envoy, is Amaratha Taransaran Spike half-elf female, a honey-haired, golden-eyed, husky-voiced, accomplished actress and manipulator who's very effective at promoting Aglaron's views and aims to others. In Aglaron, a Simbark is someone who follows the teachings of the Symbol, not just a member of the ruling council. There are around a hundred Simbarks who are not council members and have no intention of becoming so. Their training and upbringing makes them a think similarly to each other elite of the realm who lead its society and not just its politics. Like the symbol, they can use their arcane magic to heal as well as smite and combine spells in creative ways. And like her, they can defend Aglarond and those they hold dear in wrathful frenzy if pushed to do so. Changes over time. Throughout the 1390s DR, the Sea of Fallen Stars shrank. The waters are seeding to leave the shipyards and wharves of Velprintalar in a mudfield. So new yards and docks were built, warehouses to back them up, and the city expanded. Though the sea has risen locally since then and flooded some of this new construction as well as many new city cellars, it hasn't returned to its former high level. While newer, taller buildings were being raised downslope with walled gardens around them in the new city, the older cobbled streets of crowded together buildings up on the hill behind them inland became less fashionable, home to poorer folk, and slowly slipped into disrepair, becoming known as Old Velprintalar, and eventually feared for lawlessness and squalor a slum that was never as bad as its reputation. 
When the ongoing expansion of the city reached inland again, and many of the older buildings had upper floors added in new architectural styles, a patchwork, piebald appearance of mismatched roofs, balconies, and building styles developed. And that's what locals and visitors alike associate with old Velprintelar today. Veltelar today. The capital of Aglarond is a sprawling city with a breakwater ridge of tumbled, dumped rocks on the northwest sheltering a harbor that has a few fishing boats docked in the smallest, westernmost docks at the base of the breakwater. Always bustling main trading docks in the center, backed by rows of warehouses, and one of the largest shipyards in the eastern Sea of Fallen Stars to the east, dominated by huge cranes and dry dock bays, where the competing firms of Nitus Kin Hulls and Sails, Merton's Fine Seafaring, and Alansis Ventures build and refit ships large and small, but mainly large, as the local saying puts it. If you're enjoying this video, leave me a like, subscribe, and if you want to be notified whenever I've got a new video, please hit the bell icon. And if you want a steady stream of Realms Lore, join my Patreon, Ed Greenwood on Patreon, and consider becoming a protector of the realms. Your support makes these videos possible. Above New Shore, as the docks area is known, is Fairwinds, that's Fairwinds with a Y, a sloping band of land above and overlooking New Shore, where the tallest, grandest new houses of Veltalar rise, most surrounded by small, wild, walled gardens. Streets here are broad, so coaches can easily pass and turn. The area is cleaned constantly, and beauty and ornamentation are the order of the day. The wealthiest addresses in the city today are Marohar Lane and the Street of Suns and Moons. Fairwinds ends where the slope going inland grows steeper, and tall houses, narrow three and four story homes and rental shared houses bristling with balconies, climb the streets up to a plateau where older buildings are crammed together, and the architecture is varied. Old Velprintelar. Beyond its maze, the spaces between buildings grow larger again. Gardens and even a few small orchards can be seen, and most dwellings are modest. But here and there, large warehouses and even a lumber yard are to be seen. This is your view. Formerly the expanding edge of the city, but it has run out of farms to swallow, and strict agreements with the elves of the Yearwood are stopping expansion at the expense of the forest. So Veltalar is now growing to east and west, slowly and straight up, as the most precarious buildings in Old Velprintalar are being torn down and replaced by taller structures, sometimes five floors tall. A handful of landmarks from the 1360s DR survive in present-day Veltalar. The Harbor Light, a stone lighthouse at the end of the breakwater, its magical fire still burning day and night, the warehouse-like walled stone barracks at the east end of Old Veldprintelar, Griffinheit Keep, base of the 600-strong garrison of Aglarond and soldiers, the True, who act as the city watch, as well as its defenders, and Mount Regular Griffinback, aerial patrols, the Paladin Inn, long the haughtiest and most expensive accommodations for visitors to the city, recently expanded and refurbished, but still fronting on the major thoroughfare of the Street of Swords. It boasts high ceilings on the ground floor, lit by magnificent 70 candle floating suns, that's chandeliers to you and me, um, many thriving potted trees, and set into the floor bathing tubs in every suite of rooms. The more modest, the Proud Pelican Inn on Dalanthaver's Lane, clean, bright, and cozy. The downscale but cozy, the Sailor's Home Inn on Redscale Street, rustic but good food and big closets. The Council Hall at the corner of the Street of Swords and Hammertorn Street, 
formerly the meeting place of the Symbols Advisory Council, and now the civic offices offering rental meeting rooms, the trade moot, the relocated, thrice but otherwise little changed, open trading market, where farmers of Aglarond always get pride of place to sell their produce, on Many Mornings Lane, the Green Ladies Keep Temple to Shanti on Haskalavar Street, still surrounded by its orchard garden. Handbaskets of growing herbs are sold daily and seeds from a large seed bank are given out freely. The Four White Dome Temple to Ceylon, the House of the Four Moons on Sarshember Street, its Stairs and passages are softly lit by silvery magical moonlight at all times, and it's rumored to be haunted by watch ghost guardians who see and hear all, and sometimes steal forth to relay warnings to the living. And Rose Keep on Sunset Street, which is formerly the western edge of the city. Rose Keep is a Thean trade enclave. It takes the form of a simple, square, stone-walled compound. Within its heavy, iron-clad oak gates stand a stables in one corner, a two-story stone house, servants' quarters, kitchens and pantries, guest apartments and meeting rooms, across the back of the enclosure, and attached to this house in the other corner, a three-story tower topped by an observatory dome, which serves as the living quarters of the four red wizards staffing the enclave. Though, for much of its existence, it's been staffed only by one, Dena Shavers, and later her daughter Tharna. All Valtellar knows that Rose Keep has an underground storage cellar one can reach only by using magic, and that the items of minor magic lamps that need no fuel, tools that never rust, beds that float in midair, sold to the public here are to be had at great expense by entering the huge red tent erected in the center of the Weld Courtyard. Hi, welcome back to Realm Speak, where we talk about words in the realms. And this time around, we're doing this. This is Eerie Abor. He's a Eerie Abor. So ear and A are your of the four syllables, so make it four syllables, and those are the two that you emphasize. Eriabor. Eriabor is a city in the Sunset Vale on the River Chionthar's North Fork, also known as the Overland City or the City of a Thousand Spires. To me, Eriabor was always notable as the home of Give Me Wings to Fly, which is a shop that sells you mounts that can fly. So if you need your Pegasi, that's where you go to go to Give Me Wings to Fly. 